Zeta axis and today we will discuss about tropical cyclones. Tropical cyclones are the most common weather phenomena in, in tropics. Here we see a wind system which is rotating at a very high speed around a low pressure area as you can see in this video. Tropical cyclones are also called hurricanes as well as typhoons in different regions of our world. In this map we can see the path taken by the tropical cyclones. So from this image we can clearly see that the most of these cyclones are born within the tropical areas that is between 5 degree to 30 degree. Later in this video we will see why these tropical cyclones are formed only in this area. Now let's see what are the factors essential for formation of tropical cyclones. The first importance is sea surface temperature should be greater than 27 degrees Celsius. Second is there should be a Coriolis force. The third is there should be a pre-existing low pressure system. And the fourth one is that there should be an atmospheric instability present. Now let's see one by one why each of these factors are important and what role they do they play in the formation of cyclones. Now the first important factor is that the sea surface temperature should be more than 27 degrees Celsius. This is because a warm sea provides a lot of moisture to the cyclone. This moisture is essential for maintaining the core of the cyclones. Secondly, this warm sea, it, it heats the incoming air and therefore the air can carry more moisture into the cyclones. Therefore, there are two roles played by the sea surface temperature. It provides moisture as well as it heats the incoming air. Now let's see why moisture is important for formation of cyclones. So here we can see that we have two wind systems. First one is dry air, that is there is no moisture in it. And the second is a moisture, which means there is a lot of moisture in it. And both are at similar temperature on the ground level. Now as they start to rise up, we will see that the temperature of dry air is quickly reducing while the temperature of moist air does not reduce as fast as the dry air. The reason being here clouds are formed. And we have already seen in our discussion that when we convert vapor to liquid, latent heat of vaporization is released. And this heat which is released due to condensation of vapor heats the air from within and therefore the temperature of moist air does not fall as fast as the dry air and therefore we can see that the moist air will be able to move at much higher heights compared to the dry air. Here the dry air has stopped rising up because the air above it is warmer. You can see that it is 24 degrees Celsius this dry air and the atmospheric temperature is almost more than 24 degrees Celsius. Therefore, it is warmer over here and it is cooler. Therefore, this cannot rise further. So it is because of the release of latent heat of vaporization, the moist air is heated from within. And therefore, it is able to go to higher heights. This dry air cannot rise further because the air above it is warmer compared to this air. Therefore, it will not rise. But because this moist air was heated from within, it was cooling down much slower and therefore it can go to higher heights and moreover it rises with much higher speed because the gradient of temperature that is the temperature difference between the atmosphere and this rising air is higher. So this is how moisture within an air heats the system from within allowing it to reach higher heights and with much higher velocity. And that is why moisture is important. Now if we see the sea surface temperature, we can see that the sea surface temperature is greater than 27 degrees Celsius only in this region that we have highlighted. In the north or south of this, the sea surface temperature never crosses this temperature. Therefore, formation of cyclones outside this region is improbable. Now if we see the second force or second factor, it is Coriolis force. Coriolis force is important because it creates a circular flow by balancing the pressure gradient flow and that is why without Coriolis force you will not get the circular motion of the wind. Here we can see that how this Coriolis force is balancing the pressure gradient and therefore we are getting a circular motion around the 
लो प्रेशर एरिया therefore coriolis force is also very important but we know that the coriolis force is almost zero at the equator and therefore from 5 degree north to 5 degree south the coriolis force is very small therefore we cannot have cyclones within this region so if we combine this with the sea surface temperature conditions we can see that we will get cyclones only in these regions the upper margins are provided by the sea surface temperature because sea surface is not above 27 degree celsius in this region while over here the coriolis force is zero therefore we cannot have cyclones in these regions now there must be a pre existing low pressure area for cyclones to be formed because this low pressure area it attracts the air from all the directions it produces a converging wind system near the surface which is essential for formation of cyclones therefore there must be a pre existing low pressure system the second is there must be an atmospheric instability so what is an atmospheric instability in this figure you can see that there is a warm air below and the air above it is cold while here the cold air is below and warm air is surrounding it now because cold air is heavier this cold air will not rise up because warm air is lighter compared to cold air therefore this kind of system is called atmospheric stability here there is no condition for the air to rise up but if we look here we will see that there is warm air near the ground and there is cold air surrounding it the warm air is lighter than its surrounding therefore this warm air will rise up and this kind of situation is called atmospheric instability so atmospheric instability promotes vertical motion of our air and therefore there must be a pre existing atmospheric instability for cyclones to be formed in fact there is a specific value that how much it should be there but we will not discuss that now let's discuss formation of tropical cyclones so here you can see that the sea surface is heated by the sun and the sea surface becomes warmer it releases lot of moisture in the air over the time a low pressure system might develop over here because of the low pressure system it will attract all the airs from the surrounding we can see here that the pressure gradient because here there is low pressure and in the surrounding there is high pressure so we have a pressure gradient from these regions towards this low pressure area and therefore converging wind system will be produced now if we take a warm wind system we can see that the coriolis force is very small on it while the pressure gradient is trying to move this wind system towards the low pressure area but as the movement starts the velocity of the wind increases therefore the coriolis force also increases the time comes when coriolis force is able to completely balance the pressure gradient force it is at this point that the air cannot move towards the low pressure area but it starts to surround it and encircle it now because there is a condition of atmospheric instability and there is more air converging air coming from the surrounding this air mass starts to rise up and we can see that while it is rising there is a balance of coriolis force and pressure gradient however as this wind system rises up we see that the pressure gradient decreases because in the higher latitudes there is no low pressure system in the middle low pressure system is on the ground therefore the pressure gradient will decrease and therefore we can see that the wind now moves away the coriolis force is higher because the wind velocity is higher therefore this wind causes the wind to move outside of the cyclone here you can see the converging wind system and how this wind system approaches the low pressure area and rise up to form a cyclone now there is one more important point to be noted here because it is warm air which is moving over the sea which is very very hot therefore this warm air while moving on the sea surface gathers a lot of moisture when it starts to rise up due to atmospheric instability the warm air will start to form clouds but we have already seen that when the clouds are formed they release latent heat of vaporizers so we can see over here that because the clouds are formed here this wind system will again be heated we can see that again we there is an yellow color over here so the wind system is getting internally heated 
and because of this it will again continue to rise up in a very fast manner and it will go to higher heights and therefore moisture within this wind system is very important for attaining the required velocity this wind system while rising gives out a lot of moisture and it forms a lot of clouds during which a lot of internal heating occurs and they rise up but after some time when the moisture is completely removed we see that the wind system slowly weakens the pressure gradient weakens and it moves outside of the cyclone here is a video of how cyclones are formed and we can see here from the top view that this cyclone being in another hemisphere is rotating in the anti clockwise direction we have a very clear hole in the middle this is called eye the wind which is moving cannot cross this eye and enter it because we have seen that the pressure gradient and the coriolis force are in balance not allowing the wind to breach or reach the central region there is very heavy rain in the surrounding regions and there are layers formed in this cyclone now if we take the cross section of this cyclone we can see that in the middle there is this cyclone and we see this eye of the cyclone which extends from the top to the bottom moreover these are called eye walls where the air is surrounding it and it is very fast the air in the interior region is all very fast compared to outer regions here we see that along with the main cyclone we have other surrounding cyclones or rotating bodies the wind system rotates and envelops this internal cyclone we see that the wind rises on the outer side of this eye wall it never enters and it goes to the surface and then spreads out moreover within this cyclone system we can see that air rises within this surrounding clouds while cold air will descend in these gaps and this is where we get a lot of rainfalls where the warm air is rising up so there are gaps within this system through which the cold air can descend and there are areas where the warm air rises and when it rises it gives lot of rains in the surrounding of the cyclones thank you i hope you like this video if you have liked this video then please subscribe and share it with your friends we are going to make such videos related to geography so please press the bell icon thank you